channel today I'm going to be showing with you guys all of my favorite homeschooling items I asked you guys on my Instagram stories if you would be interested in seeing this video because I didn't really want to like film it and edit it and do all that stuff if you guys weren't interested but a lot of you guys said yes so we're gonna be hopping on and doing this and if you don't follow me on Instagram you should I do stuff like that on my Instagram all the time I do updates on when I'm filming when um, videos are gonna be end up end up going live so you should definitely follow me over there if you don't already it's just Cassie and crew and um, then you guys can participate in those kind of polls when I ask you if you guys would be interested in seeing videos or what video you want to see first. So we're just going to go ahead and hop into my some of my favorite homeschooling items and hopefully this video won't be 100 years long. So I also want to say for anyone who's new just to catch you up to speed, I have two daughters. London is three and Lakin is one. So Lakin obviously isn't the homeschooling age. However, London is. We're working on preschool, um, kind of like 4K, 5K, first grade kind of work with her. Um, and she's doing really, really well. This is our first year. So that's another reason I kind of wanted to do this video because I've been watching a lot of these videos and seeing what other people have recommended because I didn't know where to start. I had no idea. So let's just hop into some of my favorite items the first item that I have is very new to our collection we've had it for about a week and I actually found these at Aldi and they were five dollars a piece and I got two um, two of the same game they're just two different like learning activities I guess but um this one is numbers and the other one is the alphabet but this is just a puzzle matching game and London loves it. There's 30 pairs in here, so it goes from the number one all the way to the number 30. And what you do is you just have them count the, the fruit or the vegetable on this side, and then they have to match the number, and then they put the pieces together. So I'll have London do this, and then we'll line them up all the way from number one all the way to number 30. Of course, London's three. She can't count to 30 yet. But at this point, we're just working on like one through 10, 1 to 15 things like that so you can definitely edit this to your child's level so this is for three years plus so it just kind of depends on your child's level how high they can count um london's struggling with numbers right now it's not so, it's not one of her strong suits but with this game it's made her actually want to do it that's half of the battle when you're doing preschool age children or young children is the attention span so she loves this one and then we have the same exact thing but in the alphabet so they just go ahead and match the animal to the letter so with this I'll have London right now this is another thing the London's pretty good at the alphabet right now we're still working on some it is what it is. We all learn at our own pace. So with this, I'll have her find, um, I'll grab the letter C, for example, and then I'll say, can you find the c -c cat? And then she'll match, she'll find the animal, we'll stick them together. But the nice thing about both of these is that you can do it either way. You can have them match the animal to the letter or the letter to the animal or vice versa. And, these work really 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 well they're they are really well made they're definitely like this thick um not cardboard but like paperboard they will last a long time if you take care of them so these are awesome i feel like if you're homeschooling this is something really fun to keep in your collection and as your kids start to get better um and a little bit more knowledgeable on whatever ones you're working on these this is something that they could do individually as well if you're helping another child but they had a bunch of different ones. They had a reading one and like a world map and different things like that. So if I can find any of these items I'm going to talk about, I'll try to link them down below for you guys. But these have been a really awesome addition and I kind of want to see if I can pick up some more of these. The next one are these workbooks. London's um, curriculum that she's in right now doesn't provide any workbook type materials or anything like that it's kind of just like sheets of paper and um which is totally fine it's just how her curriculum is set up but i love these school zone books um that's the brand that these are by and then if you're wondering if you've um never picked up any of these particular workbooks they all will have um the 
the grade up here in um, a little circle here. So the P is just for preschool. But this is for ages three to five. So London is at the younger end of this book or this workbook. But I like these because it's something that she can grow into as she develops more and learns more. And these books are set up so wonderfully because um, right in the beginning here, we're just working on uh, like holding a pencil, making a line, you know, from the elephant to the peanut to the monkey to the banana. It just gets them used to holding a pencil, making lines, um, finding the right grip on the pencil, coordination, and it just has a bunch of different things like that all through the beginning of this book. And then we reach into doing kind of um, more advanced lines if that's really what you want to call it but just having them go up and follow the line doing um, different kinds of techniques with a pencil or lines with a pencil that's what you want to say but then once you get through all of those you get to the alphabet and you get to actually writing letters so I love the way these books are set up because one lesson goes right into the next it it flows beautifully. It's a wonderful workbook. And then of course, as you get further and further in, there are different activities. It goes into spelling and reading and different things like that through this book. So I will definitely link all these down below, but I love them because they're so easy um, to figure out what's inside each book. If you're kind of scrolling through like a bookstore or online trying to find what's best for your child, it says right on the front of the book, skills area included all right here down here where it'll also have the age for you and this book just has letter recognition letter and sound association alphabetical order manuscript writing eye and hand coordination things like that so this brand is specifically the school zone i've tried a couple other brands of workbooks and i've never liked any of them as much as i like this brand another thing i love about this is on the back here it always gives you more products that this company does so it has workbooks which is what this is it has flashcards which i'm going to talk about software so there's like different apps and computer games which i will talk about as well um that i absolutely love they have start to read books which i've never i haven't used yet just because london's not quite there yet but when she is i know that i'll definitely be looking into these i've heard wonderful things about their start to read books but their website is called, I think it's, it's anywhereteacher.com, which we have used um, a handful of times. It's really easy to navigate. They have a ton of different games and um, learning lessons and different things like that online, um, which London loves. We don't do that too often just because I don't like to like plop her in front of a computer all of the time. I definitely prefer the workbook route. But we have used it it's really easy to navigate it's really fun london loves it it keeps her attention and um they do a lot of the same things like in these workbooks but online so if you're someone who definitely prefers the online route that's something you could definitely look into as well but i'll link the website down below and i love these workbooks so next thing i want to talk about is the scholastic book series we have a ton of books from their series this is just the first one i found um, because this was on top of my homeschooling pile because we just did a project with this book. But this is Penguins, Penguins Everywhere. Um, a lot of the times when we're doing books, I'll read the book aloud to London. We'll talk about what is on the pages. And then oftentimes we do a craft along with the book. So on um, this particular day, we made a penguin out of paper and gave him some eyes and some feathers and different things like that he's hanging on my fridge right now but i always try to coordinate the book with the season or the time of year so around valentine's day we'll do um, valentine's day books love books things like that around christmas time we did christmas books and christmas crafts so it's really fun it just allows london to a look at the words follow along um, and then we get to do a fun craft afterwards, which I think is her favorite part, which is funny because she used to never like doing crafts, but now she loves them. So any book in the Scholastic series is absolutely amazing. Every time the book fair runs around here through our homeschool program, I get a ton of books. London loves them. And this is something that's easy for me to do with Lakin as well, because I am a homeschooling mom <laughs> and it's not always easy to homeschool when you have a baby. 
hanging off you because she's getting at that age where she's not a baby anymore. She's a toddler and it can make it difficult at times to give London all the attention she's needing during homeschool, especially because Lakin is very clingy, if I'm putting it in a nice way. So books are something that's easy for me to do while Lakin is awake and she can color on a piece of paper too and it makes her feel involved. So love any book from the Scholastic series. And if you have any Scholastic series books that you would recommend, link them down below or just mention them down below because I am looking to expand our collection. The next thing I wanna talk about are flashcards. I get almost all of my flashcards from the Dollar Tree because they're cheap and they're, um, they're good, they're great quality. They have a ton of different um, kinds of flashcards if you're looking for shapes or numbers or letters or whatever um, easy to read flashcards if your child's at the reading age but this is how I store my flashcards in these little pencil cases usually I have them all organized and um, rubber banded and such but we were working on flashcards yesterday or the day before and this fell from the table we also have some of these from National Geographic Kids, and this is the alphabet, so these ones are more realistic, T for tiger, um, but London really likes doing these flashcards. We do these together, she'll do these independently. It just kind of depends on where we're at in the day, and that's also why some of these end up going everywhere, but I think those are the only two decks. Yeah, those are the only two decks we have in here. Definitely need to get these reorganized, but it happens. It is what it is. They're kind of everywhere right now. Oh, well, we'll move on. But I love flashcards, like I said, because London does them independently. I can do them with her. They're easy to take if London's sick of sitting up at the, um, at the homeschooling table or at the kitchen table and we want to move to the couch. We can just bring a stack of flashcards on the couch under a blanket and just kind of... So the next two things I don't actually have to sit here um, and like can hold them and talk about because they're kind of they're just different but the first thing is baking I love using baking in our homeschooling I love finding different recipes to do with London um, for a couple of reasons the first one is it definitely allows London to follow directions I love finding recipes that I can convert into pictures so a lot of the times I'll find the recipe in advance and I'll make a little a little card or a piece of paper and I'll draw like two eggs or one cup of flour or you know whatever you guys can kind of get the gifs and I'll put these pictures on and she can look at them and she'll say okay we need two eggs we need one flour we need two things things of water and you know um it really she's really good at it it gets her involved it allows them to follow directions a little bit of reading skills or i guess reading skills if pictures is reading but it also teaches them that if they follow along they do the directions correctly they get this beautiful pie or brownies or cupcakes or muffins or whatever you're making and then a lot of the times we'll use that for our after homeschool snack and London loves it. She loves baking. Sometimes we just do cookies or whatever. We do a ton of different things, but London really, really likes it. And it's something that I try to get us to do about once a week or once every two weeks, just depending on the time of year. In the winter, we do a lot more baking because we can't get outside. And that leads me into my last favorite homeschooling item, and that is to get outside into nature. When people think of homeschool, they think you're just sitting at the kitchen table and working away in like workbooks. And that is the case sometimes, but I really like to get my girls outside because there's so much to learn outside, especially with London. She's so curious. She's so in inquisitive and she, she just really loves to learn. She's like a little sponge right now. I think there's, there's so much to talk about outside and in nature. We can talk about the weather. We can talk about trees. We can talk about why the leaves fall off of the trees. In the fall time, we did that a lot. We would go outside and we would talk about what different colors she was seeing on the trees. And she would pick up leaves off of the ground and she would try to match them to the tree that they came off with. So we would try to match... Um, the fallen leaves to what tree they fell off of, um, trying to match the leaves, the colors. We would talk about size of the leaves, different things like that. I know some people might be like, that's not learning, but you know, it is, it's, it's learning. And there's tons of things to learn outside. There's tons 
there's tons. I don't want to coop my kids up inside in a beautiful day. I would much rather get them outside. Let's learn. Let's talk. Let's talk about the weather. Let's talk about why it's snowing. Let's talk about why it's raining. Let's let's talk. Let's have a conversation that's so much about it in learning, especially when kids are little like that in this preschool age. I love to make scavenger hunts and we'll go for a walk. We'll um, do a nature trail. We'll see if we can find pine cones, something red, something small, something big. Um, anything. I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I would definitely encourage, get your kids outside. Let's talk. There is no excuse why you can't get your kids outside, even in the middle of winter. I live in upstate New York and we're currently, as I'm filming this, getting dumped by our second snow blizzard for the week. And so far we've accumulated three and a half feet of snow and it's still snowing. We're supposed to get about another foot. So that equals about four and a half feet of snow. But I'm still going to get my kids outside just because it's snowing doesn't mean we can't be out there. If it's not cold, we're going outside. We're going to talk about the snow. We're going to try to build different things in the snow. Or you can always bring the snow inside. I do that a lot. I'll just get a tub of wear, fill it up with snow. Let's bring it on in and let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. And London loves it. Lakin loves it too. It's a great way to entertain other kids. If you have littler kids and you're trying to homeschool like I am, it can kind of keep them occupied a little bit um, or make them feel involved in what you're doing and you're still getting homeschooling done so that would be my getting homeschooling done so that would be my my biggest thing is hands down my favorite thing is to get them outside into nature let's talk about it let's color it let's draw it tell me what you're seeing I just love it I enjoyed this video and if you're a first-time homeschooling mom like myself or you're a couple of years in and you're just looking for some new ideas. Maybe it's been a while since you've had a preschool age child. I hope that this helped you. All of the links will be down below to anything that I can find. And I just really hope that you guys found some inspiration. If you guys have favorite homeschooling items, link them down below for me. Tell me about them down in the comments because I'm always looking to expand and add new things into our homeschooling routine. I like to mix it up and keep it interesting, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!